It's time to stop feeling like you're not as good as the rest. Hello gentle souls. This video is a first in a series about a topic I am highly passionate about. As a highly sensitive, high sensation seeking introvert, I figured it's time to dive deeper into the highly sensitive person trait. Here are some questions to ask yourself. Does the world seem too bright, too busy, too loud, just too much? Are you easily overwhelmed by smells, sensations or emotions? Do you avoid violent movies? Do you often notice subtle details? Do you get exhausted from social gatherings and easily stress out? Know that you are not alone and there is nothing wrong with you. You might simply be a highly sensitive person. If this term is new to you and you're not sure if you're an HSP, go ahead and take the quiz that I've linked in the description to find out. Here's a real life example of what it's like for me. You're sitting in a cafe minding your own business when a group of patrons walks in with perfume that is so protruding that you instantly get up and run because of how nauseous the scent makes you feel. And that's just one of the many, many examples. The reason I'm so passionate about this subject is because I literally had a paradigm shift when I first heard about the term HSP. It was like suddenly everything made sense. Like why I had always felt like I was different. Why I felt so drained by large social gatherings. Why I needed to wear earplugs at the concert of my favorite band. Why superficiality and small talk crush my soul, why it's always either too hot or too cold, why I'm so particular about the fabric of my clothing, why it takes me so long to decide what I want to order, basically, why I felt so alone and misunderstood and like there was something wrong with me. If any of these sound familiar to you, then please stick around because I will share with you some strategies that have helped me navigate the overstimulated world as a highly sensitive soul. But first, let's take a little dip into the science. Highly sensitive person is a term coined by the research psychologist Elaine Aron. What exactly is this trait and why is it limited to a 20% minority of the population? It's important to understand that it's not a disorder. Your brain just works a little differently than the remaining 80% of the population. It's a genetic trait that is scientifically known as sensory processing sensitivity which is basically just an extra sensitive central nervous system, as well as deeper cognitive processing of stimuli. Essentially, it's a survival trait that prompts you to observe before acting. Bet you're wondering, if it's such a great survival trait, then why does being highly sensitive have such adverse side effects? We have the world to blame for that. We are no longer cave people having to survive on the land. We are mostly well protected in the comfort of our homes. So the threats that we used to face are no longer relevant. And nowadays our sensitive nervous systems have to cope with a wildly overstimulated world. Everyone knows in the workforce the pace is rapid. And if you can't keep up, then you're left at the bottom of the ladder. Online and in social media in particular, you are bombarded bombarded with information. On the streets, traffic is disturbing peace. No matter where you turn, there's too much going on. And you, the highly sensitive soul, notices it all so much deeper than the non-HSP. And when you notice more, you're more easily overstimulated. Being highly sensitive can feel really isolating. You feel like you can't keep up and you just don't fit in. But luckily, knowing that you're an HSP gives you the key to better understand yourself and find better ways to cope in this overstimulated world. So what are some of the ways you can find your safe place as an HSP? I'll share with you some of the strategies that have been helpful for me. Number one, at social gatherings, always have your own way out. Don't rely on anyone else for a ride. That way you can make your leave whenever you've had enough. Number two, if you're meeting someone in a new spot, make sure that you arrive early so that you can kind of scout the place. You can ease into the setting and get used to all the new sights, sounds and smells. And that way you can also choose the seating arrangements in your favor. So maybe like not too close to the speakers or under the AC vents. Number three, if you're going to a restaurant, a simple trick is to familiarize yourself with the menu beforehand. This helps with preventing the indecision that arises under the perceived tension of the moment of having to socialize and order at the same time. Number four, bring earplugs. I use flare calmer plugs that only filter out some of the frequencies, but not all of the sound. I mostly use them in loud crowd settings or even at the movies sometimes. 
Number five, plan a lot of alone time. Especially when you have social commitments, make sure that afterwards you have some time to yourself to recoup. Number six, it's important to set yourself up for success. This means proper sleep, a well-balanced diet, and limiting your alcohol and caffeine intake. It's so much easier to avoid getting frazzled when your body is in harmony. And most importantly, avoid the sugar rush. The extreme highs and lows caused by high sugar intake can be really upsetting to your mood. And finally, keep an open mind. The brain is a flexible organ, but if you lock into your beliefs too firmly, then you'll never really experience anything outside of your comfort zone. And since you can't always control your environment, it's a good idea to occasionally confront painful but rewarding moments of growth. But hey, this trait is not all bad. It also comes with some amazing benefits that I have come to love about myself. As an HSP, you have an amazing gift that allows you to be extremely empathic and make deep connections with other human beings. You notice things and see patterns that other people miss. You have an amazing imagination and creativity abounds. You have such a rich inner world and you feel things very deeply. Of course, not all HSPs are the same. In Elaine's research, she reveals the different personalities within the HSP traits, such as introversion and extroversion. I'm definitely an introverted HSP. I recharge when I'm alone and social settings drain me. But for you, it might be the opposite. To find out what kind of HSP you are, follow the link in the description to take that quiz because knowing is key in finding the right coping skills that make the world just a little bit less overwhelming and exhausting. But most importantly, hone your magic. Like I said before, you are not flawed. You have a magical gift that adds great value to the world. Thank you for watching and I truly hope this was helpful for you. Stay tuned for my next video in which we will explore the high sensation seeking HSP. I'll also leave a link in the description to some of the books that have saved my life. And feel free to support me on Patreon for access to my online courses and the behind the scenes look of my creator life. Ayo! Highly sensitive person is a term coined by the research... Creative... <coughs>